Mr. Krislov, Ms. Castelluccio, special guests, families and friends, colleagues, and members of the senior class, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Lamont Manhattan Preparatory School's Class of 2019. <laughs> Seniors, we have come here today in your honor, and we are proud of you. Enjoy this unique rite of passage, because it only happens once in a lifetime. If it's feeling like a big deal to you, it is. In fact, everything you've done in your lifetime has led to this moment of accomplishment. While you might be eager to move on, I trust that you will bear with us as we linger in the moment and allow you to bask in your glory for about an hour. I would like to thank you for all you have done to help shape Le Mans into the school it is today. And I implore you to please come back soon and often to tell us of your adventures in life after Le Mans. Keep us in your memories and we'll keep you in ours and congratulations.
It is now my great pleasure to introduce our head of school, Ms. Maria Castelluccio. Good morning. On behalf of the Lamont community, I join Mr. Spasano in welcoming family and friends. I welcome staff and faculty members. And of course, I welcome our graduates to this special occasion. I also offer a special welcome to Marvin Krizloff, president of Pace University, our esteemed speaker today. Graduation time in schools is always bittersweet. Although we joyfully come together today to celebrate the accomplishments of our seniors, the efforts they have put in, not only this year, but throughout all of their years of schooling, and we rejoice in their excitement as they receive acceptances to colleges of their choice and make decisions about life after Le Mans. We are also saddened to have part of our family leaving home, to know we will not have regular interactions with them and no longer be able to witness their growth each day. But we do know that we are sending these graduates off well prepared to begin their journey in finding their life's purpose. Each year, the graduating class is unique. Unique in their interests, their focus, their individual and collective being, and what they choose to stand up for and where they choose to focus their attention and how they push all of us to grow. This graduating class is unique. They are bright, they are talented and creative, spirited and determined, and are confident in their beliefs and how they think things should be. To this graduating class, I say, you have pushed me. You've pushed all of us at Le Mans in areas of equity and inclusion like none before. You have pushed us to examine our practices and our values, and you have pushed us to reflect on who we say we are and how our actions align. You have pushed us to make changes that will affect the lives and fut of future Le Mans students and the whole community. You have pushed us to work harder and to be better. And to me, that is the important legacy that you leave. Each year, those of us who speak at graduation look for something to say that is inspiring, meaningful, or at the very least worth listening to. And as I began to prepare for this special day, I looked to what others were saying that may be important advice for students. And as I scoured through the many commencement speeches given at a variety of colleges and universities this year, there were some words of wisdom from others that I felt worthy of sharing and which I believe to speak to where we are in our world today. Oprah Winfrey at Colorado College shared that life is all about the decisions you make. Kristen Bell at USC School of Dramatic Arts told students to listen as fiercely as you want to be heard. Stacey Abrams uh, at American University said, you need to know and be clear about what you believe. Chancellor Angela Merkel at Harvard shared, if you step out into the open and have the courage to embrace new beginnings, everything is possible. And Supreme Justice Sonia Sotomayor at Manhattan College said she focused on education and said education has more value than money and is deeply important to our growth of, as people and as a community. And all of these important messages are advice for our young people. But the commencement speech that stayed with me the longest was from Robert E. Smith at Morehouse College. And what struck me was not the generous offer that he made to set up a grant to eliminate the class two, of 219 debt that everyone is talking about and is quite extraordinary. But he offered five important pieces of advice for life, which I'd like to briefly paraphrase and share with you. Number one, he said, do the work. Grind it out, for anything worthwhile takes work. Number two, he said, take thoughtful risks. Evalu evaluate your options, but step through fear and take those risks. Number three, always be intentional about the words you choose. Understanding your words holds such power. Four, know you are enough. Demand respect from others, but most importantly, demand respect from yourselves. And finally, liberate others so that they too can become their best selves. These words and the words of others do not give advice about defining 
success by making a lot of money or power over others, but speak to hard work, having faith in who you are, standing up for what you believe, and lifting others. So I say in closing to this graduating class, you've had a great run at Le Mans, but this is just act one. Figure out your act two. It is there you will find your life purpose. I know you will all go on to do great things. I hope you always carry Le Mans in your hearts as you will always be carried in ours. So congratulations. Next, it is my pleasure to introduce Manny Caseda, the president of the student body. Mr. Marvin Krislov is the eighth president of Pace University. He is deeply committed to Pace's mission of opportunities, providing all students, regardless of economic background, access to the transformative power of education. And he is working to bolster Pace's status as the nation's leading four-year private college for driving economic mobility. Prior to Krislov's appointment at Pace, he served for 10 years as the president of Oberlin College. Before that, he was vice president and general counsel at the University of Michigan, where he led the legal defense of the university's admission policies that resulted in the 2003 Supreme Court decision recognizing the importance of student body diversity. Prior to entering academic life, Kristoff served as acting solicitor and then deputy solicitor of national operations in the U.S. Department of Labor. He previously served as associate counsel in the Office of Counsel to the President under President Bill Clinton. It is now my honor to introduce the keynote speaker to today's Graduation ceremony, Mr. Martin Krislov. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And thank you so much for inviting me to speak on this special day. Thank you, Manny, for that introduction. To the faculty and staff here today, um, to the parents and friends, and to the Lamont class of 2019, congratulations. You are now high school graduates, or you will be after you cross the stage. That is an impressive accomplishment on its own. And it's all the more impressive because you're graduating from this very special school. Even by the standards of New York City, Le Mans is a remarkably diverse and international community. That is true of you, the students enrolled here, the students graduating today, and it is true of the way this institution has taught you to think. You've worked hard here, but you've gained as much by learning to work together as you have from your studies. At a time when our world is becoming more polarized, when people are spending more and more time in bubbles of people like them and with information that caters to their preconceived notions, Le Mans fosters a truly collaborative, open-minded community. The good news for you graduates about this changing world is that you have a head start. Le Mans has, ta has taught you to embrace difference and individuality and to thrive from it. Le Mans has taught you to be strong, to think creatively and collaboratively, to be resilient in the face of challenges, and to give back to your community through service. What I think is critically important is that you keep doing that. I've spent more than dec a decade as a college president, first at Oberlin College and then up the street at Pace University. I've sent my own three children off to college. So I have some insights into what helps students to thrive after high school. As you go forth from Le Mans, whether it is to college or to a gap year or somewhere else, remember the experience you have had here, the different people with whom you've learned and collaborated, and take that commitment to building community with you. You have embraced each other's differences in your time here. You have learned from your different viewpoints 
and you have worked to understand them, that understanding, knowing how to work together across cultures and countries and backgrounds, makes you a better student and a better person. Continue to challenge yourselves as you go on to college, perhaps even joining us at PACE. I want you to maintain your commitment to embracing difference. Engage with your communities. Volunteer. Be part of something larger than yourself. Make positive change. And for those who are eligible, please register to vote and then go vote. But as much as I want you to be confident going out into the world, armed with this wonderful education you've had here, I also know that the transition from high school to college can be a challenging one. In my first semester at Yale, in freshman calculus, on a midterm, I earned the worst grade I had ever received in my life. It was a shock. I really thought I was in danger of getting a D and maybe not even passing this class. And it raised for me a lot of doubts. Did I belong at Yale? Was it a stretch for me to be there? So I reached out for help. I tried not to get too discouraged. And I asked for that help, and with the help of a dean, I found a tutor, an older student, who tutored me assiduously in freshman calculus. I worked hard to master the material. While I didn't ace the class, I did get a C, which for me was an accomplishment. I survived, and I went on to graduate from Yale. I became a Rhodes Scholar, and I've done OK. But, but, but here's the lesson in life. The lesson in life if, is if I had let that initial setback, and college will offer you wonderful joys and opportunities, but there also will be setbacks. I promise you that. If I had let that defeat me, I would not be here today. I would not have gone in academia, and I probably wouldn't be here to tell my story. So please, be prepared for the setbacks and look for the help. Here are a few things I want you to remember as you embark on the next stage of your education. You will be away from your parents. Some of you have already experienced that, the boarding students. But I want you to remember to take care of yourselves and manage your lives responsibly. Learn to manage your time on your own. Give your schoolwork the attention it needs. Remember to get enough sleep. This sounds ridiculous, but I will tell you that the thing that I see the most in first year students is that they don't get enough sleep and exercise and eat right. So think of me as your surrogate parent telling you to do this. Allow yourself time to relax, and please do not stay up all night streaming Hulu. <laughs> I teach a first year class at Pace University, and, and one of the things we talk about is transition to college, and one of the things that my students said to me is that they, didn't, they were pretty tired and they weren't able to function and they admitted to me that they had stayed up till two or three in the morning streaming Hulu. So this is not a theoretical concept. So take advantage of all the opportunities that will be available. Work hard to master your field of study but also take courses that you are curious about. Join clubs, play intramural sports, meet people, try new things, learn more about yourselves and the world around you. And when you need help, when you need help, when you feel that you may not make it, this is something I emphasize to every student at Pace, and I ask you to take this into heart. Please ask for that help. Your teachers and your professors and your advisors will want you to succeed. Talk to them. Go to office hours. Find mentors. If you need counseling, find your school's counseling center. If you need academic support, find your school's tutoring center. But always, always ask for the help that you need. So finally, graduates, as you go through the world, be curious and be confident. Be kind and be supportive. Be good community members. Stay connected to one another. Celebrate each other's successes and support each other through those challenges.
Working together, you have created a wonderful community here, and you have achieved so much. Keep creating community. Keep working together across boundaries and borders, and I know you will succeed in college and succeed in life. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Krislav. Next is a musical selection performed by Giuseppe Fu, Thais Torres, and Rafilwe Kakana, members, <laughs> members of the class of 2019. They will perform Time of Your Life. Thank you, Giuseppe, Thais, and Rafil Way. I thank you. I would now like to introduce Ms. Emma Birch, who has taught this group of seniors IB language and literature for the past two years, and she has taught many of them for the two years before that. Ms. Birch was chosen by the senior class for this honor. Please welcome Ms. Emma Birch. Good morning and welcome. I am delighted to be here and would like to sincerely thank the graduating class of 2019 for conferring on me this honor. <laughs> Since leaving New Zealand five years ago, I have found truth in the fact that New York is a city which never sleeps. A city at once electric and exhausting, stimulating and terrifying. Would I ever feel at home amongst the streets and towers the frenzy and unfamiliarity, I often wondered. Not unrelatedly, New York is sometimes experienced as a lonely city. 
And I must admit that initially, I did feel isolated living here. Despite the crush of a rush hour subway car or the winding line around the block for brunch. In her book about New York, Olivia Lang points out that loneliness doesn't necessarily require physical solitude, but rather an absence or paucity of connection, closeness, kinship. So, how do you create kinship when your family might live thousands of miles away? How do you find your people among individuals thrown together by chance? How can you make connections that aren't transient, but are grounded in something lasting and authentic? During my early days at Le Mans, I met many of you as ninth graders. Some of you had been here since elementary school, while others were in a similar situation to me, new to the city and living far away from home. And it was from this point the intersection of our cultural differences and shared experiences that a desire to feel connected grew. We became close to each other, developing a vibrant kinship that would deepen over the years subsequently spent together. So, you'll be pleased to hear that, yes, I have found my people. This outstanding group of students who we have the pleasure of celebrating today. I cannot think of New York now without conjuring your faces, your smiles, your warmth, an image of the family we have become and will continue to be, even as today marks a blossoming divergence in the path we have shared over the past four years. Your willingness to welcome and embrace has ultimately changed the topography of the city for me and for others. New York is no longer a lonely place. Comprised of diverse identities, talents, and achievements, you are an extraordinary group who have made a resounding and meaningful impact on this school community. You have defined what it means to be a Le Mans student, someone who is adept at balancing academics with sporting and artistic commitments, someone who continues to show up with integrity, even when things are tough, someone who is not afraid to express who they really are because they want to create a community where it is safe to do so, someone who is socially aware, engaged in projects of justice, shaped with values worth living by, and in spite of all its uncertainty, someone who is ready for the future. It has been a privilege to witness your personal growth and intellectual evolution and to be part of your story. To watch you overcome challenges, exceed expectations, and become principled individuals who are committed to discovering what is truly important and then acting accordingly. Many people view teachers as leaders, however, more often than not, it is I who has followed your lead. Not only have you shaped our school, you have changed who I am, both professionally and personally, in ways I could never have anticipated, in ways I cannot fully articulate. To think about the hundreds of hours we have spent together and what it all means, I am in awe, overwhelmed and humbled. In promoting an enjoyment of literature, I am compelled to present a love for what is ultimately a struggle. As Kafka suggests, the only literature worth reading is that which functions as an axe to dislodge what is frozen inside, literature that shocks and awakens, challenging the horizons of our imagination. Our conversations were not important because we reached definitive answers but because we generated countless questions. When I think about our classes together, our encounters with literature, I imagine the feeling of flinging open windows that had been sealed shut in a house long abandoned, rays of morning sunlight illuminating all the overlooked objects and making them enchanting again. 
In our discussions, we were able to breathe a new life into what was previously considered stagnant, unchanging, unchangeable. Our seminars challenged and revitalized us. And long after they drew to a close, I would find myself thinking about the meaning we created, the ideas we cultivated, the echoes ringing still. In so many ways, every comment, question, and sentiment you shared further ignited within me that which I wish to inspire within you, an insatiable curiosity and a happy realization that the conversation need never end. In learning to read carefully and critically, we obliterate walls rather than build them crossing boundaries of difference in order to understand the vast range of perspectives that exist in our world. We learn to see beyond where and who we are, forging new links to those previously perceived as distant from us in time and place. As Toni Morrison teaches us in Sula, there is profit to be had in abandoning the binary way of viewing people, imagining them easily categorized as either good or bad, lovable or unlovable. Her novel bears witness to the infinite potential we possess for recognizing one another differently, with empathy and generosity, with kindness and curiosity. Understood as a site of transformation, reading prompts us to return to ourselves radically changed encouraging us to play a thoughtful part in an ever-expanding world. This is a world that might be, at its best, more accepting and capacious, responsible and nurturing. It is my hope that after leaving this community we co-created, that you will continue to think deeply about the world and to ask important questions of it. Challenge yourself to read the books that provoke and enliven, those whose voices urge you to rethink the tendency toward parochialism and self-absorption, those whose frames of knowledge will nourish your sense of inventiveness, splendor, and humanity. Next year, we will all find ourselves separated from each other and distant from this, our former home, Le Mans. But know that wherever you find yourself, whether in New York or far from it, you need not be lonely. Not just because of the rich, sustaining memories of your high school experiences that you will carry with you throughout your life, but also because of the ongoing companionship to be had from the house of literature. For every book is a window onto a new world. I thank you for your time and wish you all a wonderful future. Thank you, Ms. Birch. I would now like to introduce Ms. Rafilwe Kakana, a member of the class of 2019. She was chosen by the upper school faculty to make the student address. Please welcome Ms. Rafilwe Kakana. total change in tone. Uh, <laughs> okay, so first I would like to say a huge thank you to the Lamont Manhattan Upper School faculty for voting for me to speak to all of you today. I really do appreciate this opportunity to say one last thing before I send myself off to college. 
However, I believe there's going to be cake at the reception, so fair warning, I'm gonna keep this pretty brief. I'm only kidding, of course, but when you see me speed walking to get my diploma, you'll know why. And I encourage you all to do the same, because if I'm not mistaken, this is the biggest graduating class at Le Mans. Um, so to keep it all moving, I suggest thinking of an up-tempo song, walking to the beat. I, for one, will be thinking of Fuego by the Cheetah Girls. Uh, <laughs> well, folks, here we are, last day of high school. Can you believe it? I mean, we've all come so far as people, as students, as a school, and we all still got so much far farther to go. It feels so surreal to believe that next year I won't be returning to this place. I mean, here I am giving the, the student address while still reeling from how phenomenal Esme's was last year. I mean, I'm even still thinking of Rashika's two years ago. I honestly don't think it's really sink, sunken in yet. I feel like I'm gonna be at purchase next year, settled in and still saying, gee, I wonder what this year's show is gonna be. My experience at the school, though certainly not without its fault, has been a thoroughly enriching one. I've learned a lot about beyond, I've learned a lot beyond academic coursework. I've also learned about myself as a performer, as a student, and as a person overall. I also learned how to say my own name and mean it. Before coming here, I just kind of let people sound it out and then say, yeah, sure, that's good, yeah. Uh, though I still relish in the pauses in the K section of roll calls with substitute teachers. You know, that pause. Okay, let's see. Um, Alexandra Isailovic, present. Tarek Karam, present. Uh, hi, yeah, that's me. That's me. I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> And though, and though being able to say your own name may seem like an insignificant thing to be proud of learning in high school, it was, a pr it was a crucial turning point in my life. I'm probably just thinking too much and going too deep with this, but being able to say my own name feels like a revelation where I am in, my, in terms of my identity. For example, just as I shouldn't let others choose how my name is pronounced, say for my parents since, you know, they chose it, uh, never let anyone dictate what your identity means to you. There have been so many times in my life where I haven't felt like enough. Growing up, I didn't feel like I acted black enough to relate to my black peers, but obviously I wasn't white enough to relate to the, my white peers. I didn't feel American enough with my weird name and my Kaiser Chief shirt, but I didn't feel African enough, especially with my lack of, lack of knowledge of Zulu, Kosa, or even Afrikaans. I tried to learn Zulu, but it didn't go so well. I was supposed to learn to count to 10, but then I only got to seven, and I forgot the next day. As I got older, I stopped wearing so much pink and wearing dresses, and there have been t t countless times where I haven't felt like enough of a woman because it's been six years since I last wore a skirt or a dress. Even to this day, I don't feel queer enough when I have a crush on a guy. Of course, now I know that my identity is my own and how I choose to experience it and express it is my own decision. And when in doubt, I just remember there's no one way to experience being black and sexuality is fluid and gender is a corporate sham. <laughs> Even beyond ideas such as how you present your race or ethnicity or sexuality or gender, identity as a, as a whole is fluid and ever-changing. Who you are and what you think of yourself is never static because as we age and as we experience more, we learn more about ourselves and what impact we want to have on this world. For example, I remember when I was in elementary school, the golden days. I was starting to discover and get recognized for my passion for music and my intelligence. I was getting the elementary school equivalent of straight A's in high regards with all my teachers and leading the percussion, the percussion section of the band elective after school, Fridays, 2.40 to 3.17. Yes, I still remember. Around this part of my life, I received an, an offer from a program for, called Prep for Prep. Those of you who don't know, Prep for Prep is a program based in New York City which offers children of color from a lower economic standing the opportunity to obtain a scholarship for attendance at an independent school. It was a program my sister had gone through and I wanted to do the same, if for nothing else, and to prove that I could do it too. A written test, IQ test, and an interview later, I was accepted into the program and thus began the Middle Ages. It was, for, it was 14 months of pure academic rigor, questioning who I was and what I wanted from life, and learning just how bad I was at literature. 
My view of myself completely dissolved. I was no longer the smart one. My borderline failing grades and prep were proof enough of that. And to boot, I was declined from all five independent schools I'd applied to. Being declined after auditioning to perform in my, school, in my school's talent show made me feel as if even music was no longer my thing, but just a thing that I was somewhat mediocre at. Even my relationships with my friends and my family were changing. I was severely depressed, and I felt like everything I'd ever learned about myself was a lie. And, those, these, and though these years were so bleak and harrowing, if given the opportunity, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Getting rejected from those schools and the talent show led to me being able to realize that the world extends beyond myself and what I say and do, but also recognizing that the impact my words and actions can have, recognizing the impact that my words and actions can have on those around me. What you say and do matters, so choose your words and actions wisely. Being rejected from those schools allowed me the opportunity to receive an, off an offer from Lamont, for which I was ecstatic, naturally. I believe my exact words upon receiving an offer were, oh, who's she? <laughs> In all seriousness, though, had I not gone to Le Mans, I may not have made the great friends and formed all the wonderful connections that have made me the person I am today. So how will these experiences continue to impact me beyond Le Mans? How do we carry these experiences, good and bad, with us to college and beyond without allowing them to weigh us down? I, for one, focus on the interconnectedness, interconnectedness of the different personalities I've had over time to motivate my present actions and make plans for the future. This is how I think of it. There are three versions of myself. My past self, my present self, and my future self. My past self is my rival. I'm always trying to beat her. However, and this part is crucial, it is the most petty, most intense rivalry you'll ever encounter. If you, if you watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, she's basically the one to my hold. She's the kind of rival that makes me wake up in the morning thinking, how am I going to beat her today? My present self is my daughter. I always want what's best for her. I want to support her endeavors in whatever way I can and make sure she's taking care of herself. She makes me wake up in the morning thinking, how can I best help her today? And my future self is my icon, everything I want to be. I look up to her. I see where she is and how happy and secure and well-rounded she is, and it makes me wake up thinking, how am I going to be her today? What steps can I take to get closer to that? Though I recognize this is not a strategy that may work for everyone, the point remains that all parts of your identity, past, present, race, gender, etc., matter. All that you do, all that you've done, all that you are, and all that you've been matters. I implore you to recognize that and use it to make this world a better place. Now, those of you who know me for a while know that I practically speak in song references. So I would like to leave you all with this quote, which I've modified for a bit to make it more personal to the journey I've had here in Le Mans. The quote is from Find My Way from Legally Blonde, the musical, which, funnily enough, takes place during Elle's graduation speech. I, pro I promise I didn't do this on purpose. It's just a good quote. In the movie, and therefore in the musical, Elle Woods follows her ex-boyfriend Warner Huntington out to Harvard University when he transferred from their sunshiny Californian college, UCLA. Upon transferring to the East Coast University, the culture shock and complete control over her future forces Elle to learn a lot about herself, not unlike the experience I had in transferring from a local public school to an independent school. This song, spoiler alert, begins as Elle's thank you to Warner after declining his proposal. She acknowledges that though where she ends up at the end of the show is not where she intended to be, it's exactly where she needs to be. And as we all go off to college, I hope we can all learn to start to connect the dots of how our past has led to our present and, and use that information to drive us to make our present actions lead to the future that we desire. Furthermore, I hope we all realize and appreciate those that have led us along the path we've followed to this day. And finally, I'd like to close with a thank you to all those that have made my journey lead to this point where, though I have much farther to go, I finally feel at least somewhat satisfied with myself. And so, without further ado, I thank you one and all Who'd help me when I'd fall Who wouldn't let me fail You've helped me to prevail I'm standing here today Happy Pride Month! Let's graduate!
Thank you, Rafil White. <laughs> and now, seniors, the big moment, the moment you've been waiting for, we will now present you with your diplomas. I'll invite, I'll invite Ms. Khan, Ms. Alexander, and Ms. Castelluccio up to the stage. Good morning, everyone. Sabrina Esther Abreu. Griffin Addison Pichani. Omotayo Adissa. Brianne Allen. Christopher Allen. <laughs> Madison Nia Atherton Graham. John Bizak. <laughs> Samoy Belvet. <laughs> Crystal Desiree <laughs> Boydi. Flavio Boasso Viale. <laughs> Alexandre Jean Bonello. <laughs> Cyan Kaya Byfield. Danica Lenore Byron. Pedro Enrique Camilo Mesquita. Evan Campbell. Solomon Takeshi, Canada. Cameron Caesar Cardwood. James Cyril Crump. <laughs> Alexandre Damiba. <laughs> Q 
Queen Trang Dao Do. Le Tien Dong. Andre Dragacevich. Hayun Du. Luca Aaron Dubnik. Isaac Moses Dwas. <laughs> Finnegan Edwards the Fourth. Guillermo Esparza Chapa. Benjamin Festa Bianchet. Elijah Francisco. Shen Cheng Fu. Giuseppe Yaoji Fu. <laughs> Valentina Garcia Gutierrez. <laughs> Kamani Gardner. Isolde Maggie Garosa. Austin Slade Getz. Dennis Gareshny. Peyton Gray. Jasmine Kelsa Guillaume. Renato Aji Pasha. Persephone Kent Hort. <laughs> Haley Irizari. <laughs> Alexandra Isailovich. Tariq Karam. <laughs> Refieldway Zanele Kekana. <laughs> Amina Krasnorutska. Maria Kranyaya. (laughs) 
Ekaterina Kukelava. Christina Kukelava. Dominique Lafitte. Aria Lau. Xiao Xiao Li. Jiming Li. Bruno Literio. Zihao Liu. Ryan Lopez. Seasway Madonna. Jacob Alec Marshall. Sophia Francesca Mazuel. Jenna Michelle Gobin Merola. Devin Ann Merriman. Carson Moon in absentia. Harper Eleanor Murray. Ida Fatu Nyong. Son Young O. Iman Jenna Omar. Pilar Beatriz Ortiz Diaz. Beza Osgul. Carolina Isabel Peña. Desiree Monique Perez. Alexander Phillips. Anna Podoroshna. Lu Tong Tsi in absentia. Manuel Ortazio Caisada. Suzette Quiroz. (laughs) 
Amila Radonchik. Gabriel Koak Resende Barboza. Sinke Robinson. Johan Sven Elof Salen. Zihao Shao in absentia. Donna Susan Schmuel. Ifemiwale Shonuga Fleming. Nicholas Sajarwo. Alana Kristen Karishma Solomon. Carmel Spanier. Diana Stoller in absentia. Thais Ines Torres. Gregory Armani Victorino. Max von Grafenried. Logan Weisberg. Alexandra Roma Gebhardt Williams. Taylor Simone Williams. Michael Wan. John Jacob Wong. Zitzin Yan. Hao Chian Yang. Kyo Suzuki Yoshinaga. Zay Rong Yu. Katian Jung. Lee Ja Jung. Sin Yu Jung. Jerwa Jung. Shi Hao Zhao.
Danilo Jerb. <laughs> Young Chung Xiao, Joe. <laughs> Tian Yu, Ju. Dania Zulimanova. Congratulations. Before we present the graduating class to you, I'd like to welcome members of the high school and middle school chorus who will lead us in singing the Lamont Manhattan alma mater, conducted by Mr. Ryan John, upper school choral director. Thank you. So, sorry, one more thing. Before I present the class of 2019 to you, two brief requests or announcements. First, in just a few moments, these graduates will exit this, uh, the ballroom. So as they recess, I'd like to ask that we allow them to exit uh, the, the ballroom to the sidewalk and the street beyond where we'll be able to congratulate them. So please keep the aisles and the exit clear so that uh, they can get out outside the ballroom. And secondly, um, please everyone do join us at One Morris Street for a reception on the 22nd floor immediately following the ceremony. Don't miss the senior slideshow and of course the traditional cutting of the cake. I'd now like to invite the class of 2019 to stand and face the audience.
class of 2019. Class of 2019, you have your diplomas in hand, but according to tradition, the moment you move that tassel on your cap from the right to the left, you move from being a student to being an alumnus or an alumna of Lamont Manhattan, and that's a lifetime distinction. So it is with great pride, ladies and gentlemen, that I present to you the Lamont Manhattan Preparatory School Class of 2019. Congratulations. We'll now begin the recessional.